Hello. Just getting set up. Um, give me one second. Um, and we will get started. Um, <clears throat> thank you. <clears throat> For coming, give me one second. I just gotta um, add. Here we go. <clears throat> so today's topic was going to be, or is going to be, about um, what is the no guesswork diet. So today I um, wanted to start. This is my first time doing live, like I said. So um, bear with me. But I wanted to just talk about what. Um, this book is actually about. And so I'm going to start by just telling you what started it all. So back in 2014, there were, um, I, I went to an obesity conference and when I, that's when everything started. Um, <clears throat> on, um, and so I went back to my, uh, my, my hospital and just started working on this obesity thing. But what happened was it got, we got really busy really quickly and it turned out that we weren't able to see patients in and then we, a, a wait list grew. And for, for some some people who are on here, they may know that we did have this wait list. Um, and so we, ha I wanted to come up with an, something to, to fix it or to address it. So we hired some more physicians. But what I really wanted to do was be able to uh, share it with more than just the people I was seeing in my clinic. Because if... I could hire a dozen physicians and still wouldn't um, cover the amount of people I wanted to reach. And so I decided to write a book about it. And so that's where the No Guesswork Diet came about. Now, what is the No Guesswork Diet? So the No Guesswork Diet is basically, um, there are two things about the No Guesswork Diet that makes it unique. One is, it is a low-carb Mediterranean diet. Um, but in the beginning, we, we, we don't focus on the Mediterranean part. We just focus on the low carb part so that we can get you started to get into a healthier weight. And then we, we blend in the Mediterranean diet. And when you read the book, you'll see how we do it. And the reason we do a low carb diet is because it follows my six S's and we'll talk more about that in a different post, but a diet can be good for a lot of things. So many diets are good, but good for what? Is it good for weight loss? Is it good for health? Is it good for both? And so you really want to choose a plan that is good for both. And so in, in, in a whole host of other things. And so for me, um, I, um, came up with the six S's, which, which stands for, is it safe? Um, which this no, no guesswork diet is, is it, um, simple. You, you want something that doesn't have too many, uh, different things that you need to do. Is it, um, sustainable? So sustainability is important because if you can't stick to this plan, then, then what's the point? Um, and then, so that's three. So then is it satisfying? Like, do you enjoy it? And there's so many things you can enjoy about a low carb diet. And it, if you, when you read the book, you'll see a lot of the su suggestions that we have. Um, there's so it, there's so many things that are that are that are tasty that you will enjoy. And then, is it superior? That's S number five. Um, and superior means is it superior for weight loss? And studies have shown that a low carb diet is the best diet overall for weight loss, particularly in the beginning. Um, 
as you go farther out, there's they 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 tend to um, join together different diets, but there's a reason for that, and we'll talk about that in another post. But it is superior; it's been shown to be superior in almost every study that's been done, um, particularly when you start out. Um, and then the last S is sugarless, so we should be avoiding um, sugars and refined carbohydrates. The the carbs that are good are fiber. Um, and we'll talk more about that later. Um, but so that's the no guesswork diet in a nutshell about what type of diet it is. And the, But the second thing that makes it unique, so the first thing is that it's a low carb Mediterranean diet because Mediterranean has been shown to be um, best for heart health. And, 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 and by the way, a Mediterranean diet in and of itself is a low, can be, I won't say is, but can be a low carb diet. But what I will say, it's a, it's actually a high fat diet, but it's a lot of healthy fats. The second um, thing that makes this diet unique is that even though we want you to do a low carb diet, we, um, you don't have to be as low as maybe some other diets like that for keto, for example. Um, the one thing I found when I was running my clinic is that I found that every person was different in the, 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 how low they needed to be on their carbohydrates. And so I came up with the hunt theory that every individual has their own unique carb number, which is why we hashtag, what's your carb number? Because each of us have a different carb number. And what that means is what number you need to be below in order to predictably lose one to two pounds a week. And so um, we figure that number out for you and I explain it in the book, how to figure it out. And so that's what we do um, in our clinic. And once you find your carb number, that's your carb number for life. Barring you know some, some major changes like menopause or the pandemic where you're sitting all day. But, but in general, the... Um, your carb number is your carb number. For instance, my carb number is 70. So if I get my carbs below 70 for, for on average for the week, I will predictably lose one to two pounds a week. Your number might be 100. Somebody else's might be 50. Um, so that's what makes it a little um, different in that way from a keto diet in that you don't have to get below 50, which keto is. And if you go to no guesswork, um, um, on the IG page, we go over the different types of diets, so keto, Mediterranean, and, and um, low carb. And so it's really um, important that you find your carb number, which means it's really important that you track uh, your food. So, you know, in the, in the apps, my fitness pile, lose it. There are a bunch of apps. I have an app um, that um, I mentioned in the book, but had to be taken down because there were some issues with the developer, but it will be back up soon. So if you track your food, you will be able to find your carb number. Um, what, what we have people in my clinic do is they track their food, everything they put in their mouth, drinks, candy, whatever it is. And when they come in, if, they're, if they've lost one to two pounds a week, I look at their app and I average it out for the week for the, for the last three weeks. And then let's say their number is 80. So if their number is 80, I go, okay, looks like your number is 80 um, because you've lost one to two pounds per week. So what we should do then is confirm that number. So now what I want you to do is stay below 80. And then come, when you come back for your weigh-in in three weeks, we will look at, look at it again and see what happens. And so you come back in three weeks. And in three weeks, if you're still losing one to two pounds, then we crack the code. That's your number. And again, that is your number for, for life. And, and if, we, if we miss, you know, miss the, 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 the point on it a little bit, we can always adjust it. But in general, um, we'll, you, you figure it out in, in the first couple of weeks. And so the, the difference, and so the reason that that's important is because one, you know what your carb number is. So hashtag what's your carb number. And then you can live your life so that if one day you do go to, I don't know, a birthday party um, and you do gain a couple of pounds, it's okay because you can grab the dial, 
turn it down to your weight loss number, which is for me, 70, knock those couple of pounds off, and then go back up to your, your maintenance number, which is a different carb number, which we'll talk about at a later date that I um, explain in the book. And so it's, it allows you to be able to have flexibility. Um, it's not an all or none phenomenon in the sense that you only can, um, you have to be below 50, you have to stay there. It, 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 it's, it doesn't work that way. You need to know what your numbers are. And once you know what your numbers are, then, then we can work from there. So, so that's kind of um, the way we approach it. And then we want to make sure that people eat enough protein because protein is important um, in general, but protein also is really important to help curb um, your appetite and make you feel satisfied or satiated. And so we use protein um, as a way to help knock down the ghrelin levels. <clears throat> and I talk about ghrelin, or we, I call it the hunger gremlin in, in your body because your body is managing a bunch of set points. So it manages um, your pH, and it's good at it. So your, it manages your pH, which is set at 7.40. So if you deviate from your pH, which is 7.40, you will, um, your body will get you back to 7.40. Same thing with temperature. If you, your temperature is not 8.6. If, you, if your temperature goes up, you will sweat. If your temperature goes down, you will shiver in an effort to get your um, temperature back up to its set point. Your body also has a set point for weight. Um, in fact, your weight or, or the calories in your fat cells are probably the most important thing that your body regulates. And the reason is because your body needs calories in order to live. You, your heart can't beat if you don't have calories. Your, your brain can't function if you don't have calories. You're, so you can't breathe if you don't have calories. And so your body needs to be able to make sure that it has the amount of calories that it needs and the amount of storage that it needs. And so it has a set point. And it's like a thermometer. If, you, if, if your thermometer is set at 250 pounds, or your thermostat, I should say, is set at 250 pounds, if you try to turn that thermostat down, your body will get your temperature back to where it belongs, unless you know how to manage those hormones. And these things are called your gut hormones. So they're in your gut. And ghrelin is one of them. It's the only hunger uh, hormone that we know of. And like I said, I call it the hunger gremlin. Um, and so we use protein in an effort to help balance out your, your hormones. Insulin is another hormone, which is why um, we do a low-carb diet because insulin is the only fat storage hormone that we know. So the higher your insulin levels, the more fat storage. And so if you can keep your insulin levels low, you can actually burn fat as opposed to storing fat. And that's kind of what we want to do, and that's the name of the game. And so... In this book and in the program, we try to teach um, people how to just live their life with a low-carb diet that has high amounts or moderate amounts, I should say, of protein um, and, and, um, and healthy fats, because that is very, very important um, that you have that combination. And so if you just focus on keeping your carbs down, more times than not, all of those other the, the other macronutrients, um, so your protein and your and your fats, will fall into place. So if you can get your carbs down less than 100, and in the book we we try to start with a target of 75. If you can get your carbs down there, the proteins and the fats um, should work themselves out. And so it's important that you um, get enough protein and get enough healthy fats. And so um, that's how we work the diet part. But the no guesswork diet is not really a diet at all. It's a overall plan. So it's a diet in the sense that it's the food that you eat, but there are other things that go along with it. 
And it's also a diet that isn't meant in the terms of a simple, in the, in the, in the temporary terms of diet. It is meant in the, you know, this is a lifestyle change. And so, you know, I tell my patients all the time, if you continue to eat the same way you've always eaten, you'll always be the same way you, you, you've been. Or if you go back to eating the way you've always eaten, you'll go back to the same way you've always been. We do need to make changes. Um, and so that's what we try to, to, to teach and what we try to show in our, um, in our clinic. And so it's important that you, you get enough protein. It's important that you get enough uh, fats and that you keep your carbs low um, because one, you need to keep your carbs low in order to keep your insulin low. And you need to keep your insulin low in order to burn fat. Because what happens when your insulin's high, like I said, is fat, you, you start storing fat. And actually when your insulin is high, it won't allow you to release the energy out of the fat cell. So the only way to, re, to, to, to lose weight and to lose fat in particular is to lower your insulin. Not, not to mention that uh, if, you, if you eat a lot of carbs, that, that drives inflammation. And, it, and we know that sugar and, 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 and refined carbohydrates, in particular sugar we've done the studies on, that that can actually feed cancer. And so we should not be eating a lot of sugar and we should not be eating a lot of refined carbohydrates. And you might say, well, gee, doc, that, you know, all the things I love, but there, one, you can eat certain things in moderation, but two, there's so many substitutes and we um, talk about it on the website um, and on, you know, on our IG and Facebook page, the No Guesswork page, about a lot of tasty substitutes. So the diet is not a temporary diet. It is a diet for life. And then you get to learn. And then, you know, we join, right, a, a community. So someone else can give you um, some suggestions and say, hey, oh, I tried this recipe, like bread cheese. Like, so B-R-E-A-D cheese is something that someone told me. Um, and it's, it, and it, it's really it actually tastes like a grilled cheese sandwich. Um, but if you put marinara sauce on it or you dip it in marinara sauce, it actually tastes like a pizza. Um, so there are a lot of, lot of little things that you can do. But the diet is, um, is, 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 is a way of life um, to eat healthy. Um, obviously, we know too much sugar is not good for you. Too many refined carbohydrates are not good for you. Um, for um, patients who have diabetes, they know this all too well. If they overdo it on sugar or refined carbohydrates, their sugars will spike um, because it's not good for you. And so that's one part of the no guesswork plan. The other part, that there are four pillars to, to weight management. And the first is diet, which is why we spent so much time on diet. And the second is um, physical activity. Now, physical activity is not just exercise. Physical activity is a combination of exercise, which is, okay, I'm going to the gym, okay, I'm taking a planned walk, and something else called NEAT. And NEAT, N-E-A-T, and NEAT stands for non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So basically, all of the energy that you expend outside of exercise. And if you think about it, <clears throat> you, you can really maximize your NEAT, which is all the other activity you do outside of exercise, because um, there are 168 hours in a week. If you, you know, exercise an hour a day for three, four days a week, it's only four or five hours in a week. You still got another 163 hours. So you can imagine, even though you, you, you might not think walking up a flight of stairs might be helpful, walking down a flight of stairs might be helpful, or parking your car farther away and not fighting people for that spot close to the store, that those pennies add up. And you have an, a whole 160 plus hours to add up those pennies. And it turns out that based off of studies, you can actually burn 30% more calories with NEAT 
than you can with exercise alone. And so one of the things that we try to tell people in our clinic is that you need to maximize your need. Um, and so that non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And so we tell people to get their Fitbits and track their steps so that we can keep our steps high in order to burn energy. Now, mind you, I'm not saying that exercise isn't good for you because it, it really is good for you. And it helps with um, insulin resistance, um, heart health, so many different things. But the most bang for your buck out of that 168 hours that you have in a week is to maximize your need. That is critical. And so we talk a lot about that in the book as well. Um, and so we went through, the out of the four pillars, we went through two. One is diet. We talked about that. We do a low-carb Mediterranean diet. We start off focusing on low-carb. We tra um, transition. Two is physical activity. We want to make sure you get your exercise. But we mainly want to make sure that you maximize your need. Um, and get that get your need up because you may not burn break a sweat, but you're burning calories, and you're gonna be able to utilize that um, in order to get yourself to a healthier weight. And then the third thing is behavior modification. So that's the third pillar of weight management, and so that's key. You we need to start with a mindset. Now, recently I was. I'm talking to an editor, and in my book, I talk about you need a mindset. You have to have a mindset of change. Um, but then, in a later chapter, I said weight management is not just about willpower. And so she questioned that. To she questioned me because she thought that that sounded contradictory. But it really isn't. Um, mindset is mindset. So th th it is something that you believe that you want to act out. Willpower is after you get the mindset. So first you need to have the mindset. Willpower is you trying to sustain whatever the mindset is. And so what I'm basically saying about willpower is that willpower is important, but it is it is a finite thing. It is typically not long lasting in most individuals. And so yes, we want the willpower, but we need to have the strategy of managing your hormones because you won't have to work so hard to maintain your, your body weight and, and keep yourself at a healthy weight if you know how to balance those hormones with, with the food that you eat. And so yes, you can willpower your way through a, a week or Willpower your way through a month or, or, or two months or maybe even longer. But can you willpower your way every single day and night for one year, for two years, for three years and keep that willpower up? That is very difficult and not many people can do it. And I think if that is your only tool in your toolbox, that is a setting you up for failure. And so we... And like to set you up to win. And so that's the reason we teach you about hormones and how to manage the hormones and how to live your life so that you, you because you might have a bad day, somebody might piss you off. Some, you know, you, there are a lot of things that can happen that will throw willpower off. You still need the mindset, right? You still have to have the mindset of change. You still need to want to do something. You still need to have that philosophy. Um, and willpower, like I said, is important, but you need some other things in order to, uh, to help you continue to do it day after day after day. And so that is what we try to teach you in this book. That is what we teach in the, in the um, clinic and get people to have that mindset of change, that mindset of getting to a healthier weight. Because... Now is the time. Um, if if any other time was it, what well, this is the time. If not, this is definitely the time because, given the pandemic, the COVID nineteen pandemic that we we have, we we do know that obesity. Um, if you get a, infected with COVID nineteen, you you it's a obesity is a risk factor to have worse complications, and the reason we um, um, think this 
is because of the, the, the cell, the fat cell itself is, is an active cell. It's not just for cushion and to keep you warm. Um, I wish it was, but it really is very active, particularly when it gets, becomes what we call diseased. When it becomes a diseased fat cell, it becomes um, metabolically active. And so it does things to one, not allow you to lose weight, but two, to cause chronic low level inflammation. And so when you then put in a virus called COVID-19, it gives you an exaggerated inflammatory response. And that exaggerated response is a, a part of what sets that off is something called a cytokine storm. So that there are these, what we call cytokines that are molecules that are in the fat cell that when they're released, they, they cause, they wreak havoc across your entire body. Um, it cause inflammation um, throughout your entire body. So your brain, your heart, your kidneys, um, your blood vessels, which is why many people um, get blood clots um, when they get a COVID-19 infection. And so we learned early on through just going through this as this new novel virus came that many of the patients were getting um, blood clots and, and not just like a regular blood clot. They were getting blood clots that were, were destroying vital organs. And so we, so now we routinely give patients blood thinners when they come in so that it, so you won't get those blood clots, clots because oftentimes people were dying because of the blood clots. And so that's another reason why I don't want to get too much on the tangent because people who know me know that I can talk for days and I'm not going to keep you much longer. But, um, but that's one of the reasons why we do better at treating COVID-19 because we're, start, we're, we're, we're rapidly learning things about what to do, um, about how to, you know, treat patients. And, you know, one of the, one of the uh, big things was the fact that we, um, something that we normally give other patients, we realize that we need to routinely give it to um, patients who have COVID-19. So, um, and, and steroids for, um, for patients, um, um, for the patients that, that need it. And so, um, obesity, um, is, is, is a really bad risk factor. And if you look at the numbers, that is really, is what's causing a lot of problems. And so we really do need to work hard at getting to a healthy weight, not just for COVID-19, but for many, many, many reasons for your diabetes, for your heart, to prevent cancer, to, to do so many other things. And so um, I really do think that um, working on your diet and getting to a healthier weight um, is really important. And don't think I forgot the fourth um, pillar. I didn't. Um, but getting to a healthier weight is very important. And it's my mission. It's my passion to do so. Um, and so in our clinic, that's what we do every day, all day. And I hope with this book, I'm able to um, disseminate the information pretty easily. The, the feedback that I've gotten thus far um, is very positive. And people say that it reads like a novel. Um, it's not your, it doesn't read like a traditional diet book. And, and, and that was done intentionally. I mean, you know, the, the books that, that, that I've written with my friends in the past, um, it, they, they were written in a way to inspire and to encourage and and that's what this that's how this book was written i wrote it in the same vein of the pact or the bond or we beat the street so that you 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 know it, it will inspire and encourage you because we do that in our clinic like you know not only am i the physician but i'm also the patient's cheerleader um, because there are going to be days that when you come in for your way and you're not going to be so, you're not going to be your best. You're not going to have the most willpower. So hopefully I can get you excited, get you ready to go. And then, so when you leave in, you know, it'll, it'll hopefully last you until your next visit with me. And so that's why we, um, um, I wrote the book in, in that vein to give you that same kind of inspiration and, and also, um, support one another, which is why I created the No Guest Work, um, Facebook and IG page and also 
a Facebook um, no guesswork group. So that is just a group of people who it's a private group and you know you can exchange information and things if you don't want to just be on the public page because um, it's important to have that support system. So I tried to do everything I could with what, with what happens in my clinic and try to reproduce it in the book. Um, and so in the things that I couldn't reproduce in a book like a support group, we, we do it online. And that brings me to the fourth pillar. Um, the fourth pillar is, if needed, medications and or surgery. And so, you know, people say a lot about medications. And I talk about it in the book just to explain it to you, but we don't go so much into detail in the book because we the book can't give you a medication. So you need to go to your physician. But a lot of physicians are not comfortable um, 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 treating obesity and because you need to get board certified in it and the medications um, they, they, they're not that familiar with. Um, but ironically, many half of the medications that we use are medications that we use for other things like diabetes, like headaches. And, and the reason that we use them is because it was found that those medications can actually help in weight loss. And we've been using them for 15, 20 years and they've been safe. And so um, it's um, something that was studied and then it was repurposed um, for obesity, FDA approved, to get you to a healthier weight. And one such medication is a medicine um, that actually helps to balance out your hormones. All of them work in your, in your brain where your appetite center is. So your appetite center is, a, um, is in your brain and your hypothalamus, something, an area called your arcuate nucleus. And that's where all, all this stuff tinkering happens, where your body you know, makes you more hungry or less hungry. And then, and then in your um, limbic system, where you do the craving. So all of that is tightly regulated and controlled in your brain. So these medications can help you, you know, stick to your goals, stick to your diet. And so, so we use them when we need them. Um, we don't always use them, but if you need them, we should use them. Like I tell patients, you know, somebody's like, ah, I don't want to use that crutch. Ah. And my, you know, answer to that is, if it's raining outside, would you use an umbrella? You probably wouldn't use an umbrella inside the house, especially if you believe in bad luck, but you would use an umbrella outside, right? But you wouldn't use it all the time. You would use it while it's raining. And then when it stops raining, you put the umbrella down. It is the same concept with obesity or any other medical issue that you deal with. It's my umbrella analogy. So use the umbrella when you need it, while it's raining. Once, if you get to a healthier weight or when you get to a healthier weight, you can put the umbrella down. It's, it's like people are like, no, I don't wanna do it, but then I see them fighting and then they are not able to get to a healthier weight. And they decided not to do it because they thought it was a crutch. And so you'd rather be at an unhealthy weight because the thing that's going to get you to a healthier weight makes you feel like it's a crutch. When you can put the umbrella down when you get to a healthier weight. That's the mentality. That's how we should be looking at this. And it, like I said, in all aspects, if you need an umbrella, use the umbrella. I'm not going to say, okay, I want you to go up against, you know, the heavyweight champion of the world, which is in this case, obesity, and I'm gonna put you in there, I'm gonna put one glove on you and tie the other hand behind your back. You, you still might have a chance if you bob and weave enough and you do the rope-a-dope enough to beat the heavyweight champion of the world. But why not give you both hands to fight, both tools? Why, why should I make the job, which is already an insurmountable job, really, really tough? For a lot, it's an uphill battle. Why make it harder? Like, is, 
you know, it's almost like, like, it, what are we trying to do? Torture ourselves? Um, and so we do use medications if we need them. Um, and so if, if you feel like you're having a, a tough way to go um, with a lot of cravings, because the medications specifically work on cravings and hunger. Um, they don't, they can't melt your, melt your weight away. I wish they could. Um, but there's actually a pill that, that's in research for that. But, but what it does is it helps to control cravings and hunger and help to reduce insulin resistance. So it helps to get your hormones in balance, which is what weight loss is. It, it is to help get your hormones in balance. Um, and once you get those hormones in balance, your insulin levels, you get them down, your ghrelin levels, you get them down, and your other hormones are called satiating hormones, hormones that make you feel satisfied, those need to come up. Because what your body does to get you back to your set point, get you back to that thermostat setting of 250 or whatever it is, is it will increase your ghrelin levels tenfold. And the ones that make you feel satisfied, make you feel not hungry anymore, make you feel great, it'll decrease them to zero. So you, you got tenfold hunger, zero satisfaction. That is tough to willpower your way through, through that. And that's the lens I'm looking through. And so um, we use all modalities. We start with the, with, the, with the base, which is your diet, exercise or physical activity, and behavior modification. And if need be, we use medications and or surgery. And we'll talk in another post about these other things. We're going to be doing this more often, maybe once or twice a week. So, because I get a lot of questions um, and I want to start answering the questions. So, let people know. I'm going to do it at 6 o'clock, 6 or 6.30. I think my time will be 6, um, <clears throat> at least once or twice a week on a Monday, maybe um, on a Thursday. I'm going to do one this Thursday for sure um, at 6. Um, but we'll, we'll do it at least once or twice a week. And so the more questions come in, the more questions we'll answer. I do want to, before I go, I do want to answer one question when I was on a radio um, show the other day. One A, a tweet came in to the... Um, to the, to the radio host to say, well, yeah, you know, if you're diabetic, you can't do a low carb diet or intermittent fasting because you have diabetes and your sugar might go too low. And that is absolutely not true. Um, you, you, you need a, you know, a physician to be involved in the management of your medications because if you do decrease your um, sugar intake, you won't need as much medicines. And so the amount of medicines you were getting was to treat sugars that are this high. And remember, the sugars that are this high is because you're, before we had medications to treat diabetes, the best way and the only way to treat it was a low-carb diet because we realized that the only way your sugar can go up is if you put sugar in the tank. Like just the only way your water can rise in the tub is if you put water in it. If you don't give it water or if you don't give it sugar, the sugar won't rise. And so, and this is specifically, I'm talking about type two, type two diabetes. Um, and so if you reduce your sugar intake in your refined carbohydrate intake, because refined carbohydrates, so bread, rice, pasta, potatoes, turns into sugar once you digest it. So if you reduce your sugar, it will, um, you won't need as many medications. And so, yeah, you probably shouldn't be um, managing your medicines on your own, but if you decide to embark on a low carbohydrate diet, um, you need to talk to your physician if you're on diabetes um, medications. So when patients come to me and we start a low carbohydrate diet, certain medicines we cut in half after the very first visit um, other medications, um, we stop all together. When they walk out, we just stop them all together. And so there's a method to, to doing this, but by no means um, could, would, should you say that you can't do a low carb diet if you have diabetes because you'll get low blood sugars. No, you, that's the point. The point is 
to do a low carbohydrate diet so you won't have to take the medications that make your blood sugar low. And so what we do is we get patients off of diabetes medicines. Um, and, and, and the best way to do this, the most healthy way to do this is with a low carbohydrate diet. And, 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 and I might add, <clears throat> intermittent fasting works the same way. If you read um, books on intermittent fasting, like Jason Fong's book, The Obesity Code, or some other books, they explain, like I explain in my book, that the way that this thing works is because we're reducing your insulin. So carbs um, increase your insulin levels the most. Protein, not so much. Fat, not really at all. So if you reduce someone's carbohydrate level, uh, intake, you will reduce their insulin, thus not make fat, thus burn fat. So what's a better way to, re to reduce your insulin? Well, one is a low-carb diet, but if you don't eat at all, you won't have any insulin or very little insulin production. And so that is the whole idea about intermittent fasting. And we'll talk more specifically about the different diets and why they work and how they work. But I'm going to end here. But what I would like to say is the reason we you choose the no guesswork diet, the, which is a low carbohydrate Mediterranean diet, is because it checks all the boxes for the six S's. So it's safe, it's simple, it's satisfying, it's superior, it's sustainable, and it's sugarless. And so if you guys have any more questions, um, just let me know. Um, I'm more than happy to answer them. You can you know, go to, the, to any of the social medias and send a, send a question. And, and send the, unless it's a personal question, um, make, don't send it privately unless it's a personal question because I can guarantee you there's someone else out there who has the exact same question that you have. Um, and I'll compile a lot, of, a lot of the questions. Some of them I, I'm going to hold until we answer the questions live, but, um, but uh, I can go on and on and on because this is, is my passion. But I just wanted to thank all of you guys for being here. Um, spread the word about the book, spread the word about what we're doing here. Um, and once you read the book, you're going to be an expert. So then I need you to get out there and, and, and teach and preach the same way, because I, I really do f feel like this crusade is, 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 is one that's winnable. Um, we can win this. It, it is, um, obesity is the largest chronic disease that we have in this country and for around the world that matter. Um, there are, um, the, the numbers are almost, you know, half the, the adult population has obesity. Um, and it will, in, in the estimates is it will be that in the next, you know, eight to 10 years. Right now we're at 42%, 42.4% to be exact. Um, so this is, there's no other medical problem um, that you can name that has 42.4% of the population. So we got a lot of work to do. And I can't do it alone. So I really do appreciate all your help. Um, and I think I'm going to sign off because I still got notes to write um, and some, some uh, other medical work to do. So my, 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 uh, my day never ends. Take care, guys. Love you. Bye.